Hi, I'm Coach Landry, and the topic is making conflict turn into success. In intimate relationships bring up intense feelings. Conflict with a the, with the partner can feel destabilizing and make it difficult to feel articulate and or to be articulate and open and expressive. Many people try to avoid conflict through a variety of maneuvers and you know, tricks and strategy, but pretending to always agree or being aggressively stubborn so the other person is too afraid to speak up or avoiding topics that could bring up disagreement are often just manipulations and controls. So there's always issues in romantic relationships that really get us going, hit nerves, really get us fed up. Now, one thing I want to say before I dive into things of how to turn conflicts into success is knowing if you're in an unhealthy relationship, then there is no success with conflict. Because it's usually unhealthy relationships. Go back and watch my segment or listen to my segment on nine signs of an unhealthy relationship. Um, If you have those signs in your relationship and those things are going on, then these things aren't ever going to be able to be productive. Um, If you're in an unhealthy relationship and it's unsolvable, you need to remove yourself from the relationship and move forward with your life. But if you're with somebody that you love, um, and that you have a lot of productivity with, then these are things that will help sharpen your skills so that you that you guys can get to the table and resolve things and turn what normally would be a fight into something maybe more productive for your relationship. These often relate to our childhood experiences and with important others' experiences that were painful and the emotions of which are stirred up when you know a similar situation occurs again. And having someone recognize your deepest fears and often... Um, look at you in a different light or offer reassurance can be extremely reparative. So using words to state what you believe or the other person is saying can relieve the fear or their fear of being dismissed, left alone, or not taken seriously. So being able to fight productivity often often brings a couple closer and strengthens their relationship. Now what's important about the mentality before I go through um, the, the six keys to this is that you both have the idea of resolve. And again, if you if you aren't sure you're with somebody like that, go back and watch some of my audio segments and my videos on uh, nine signs of an unhealthy relationship, personality types, and things of those sorts. Watch those things three to five times so you really can absorb the information. And once you get it, a lot of these future videos will help you be much more um, acute in understanding the information. So number one in being productive with conflict is convey active listening. Repeat back to your partner what you think you've heard him or, him or her say and ask for clarifying questions. This is important even when you think your partner is being irrational. You don't have to agree with your partner's point of view to take their feelings seriously. People often assume they know what someone has said, but they have actually misunderstood in a, in a vital way. And this can lead to a repeat fight the next week and the week after. Clarify, even when it seems redundant. Number two, be authentic. If you don't understand what your partner is saying, don't pretend. Ask for more explanation. And if you can't apologize honestly, don't. Placating someone to end conflict can make the other person feel manipulated or dismissed. So try to let go of the need to be the good one in a relationship and stay with the goals of closeness and understanding. But if you're angry, it's okay to show that. It's a myth that the healthiest arguments are always calm and contained. They're not. But you want to be with someone who also is arguing with you with the sense of they want to be committed to you, they love you, and they actually want a relationship with you. Um, That is when um, that, that basically you should walk away and not consume yourself with time being decimated in the, into it. But if uh, you know you think that yelling or anything like that is a sign of unhealthiness, it's actually not. Um, you need to be respectful, but it's okay if your tone comes up. It's okay if someone hits a nerve. That's a part of conflict. The point is, is that both people want a committed relationship at the end of it, and that's why they're at the table. If they're at the table just to be right or to defend themselves, that's not the same thing as wanting to be committed and involved. Two different types. So make sure you you understand if you're with someone who just wants to be right um, or be in control, uh, that is not a healthy partner. That is someone who's more interested in themselves than the couple as a whole. Number three, set reasonable boundaries. 
If things get out of hand, it's important that both partners know they can set limits that will be respected. This safety is key to healthy fighting. It's essential that couples learn to recognize when an argument is too heated and about to get out of hand so they can take a breather. Sometimes it's hard, and maybe one time in an argument, you'll have one person who's being a little more of an adult than the other. Call the shot. Even if you think someone's completely wrong, be the one to say it needs to cool down. What's important is to come back to the issue at a later point. People that avoid conversations and never want to talk are people who don't have vital, just invested interest in you as a whole. And that's why they don't ever want to, that's why they skip topics. That's why when you bring it up, they shun it off. That means they're not compatible with your needs. Walk away from people like that. But if you're with someone who is compatible, it can, it will help to clearly establish when it will be so that both parties know their concerns are not being swept under the rug. Keep in mind that some people become enraged by an attempt to pause an argument because of past experiences. This was a tool that was used to dismiss them in another relationship. So they may treat you indifferently because of it. Don't always think that that's your problem. These are in one of my videos. I talk about, you need to take care of yourself before you enter other people's lives so that you can handle and love them respectively and correctly. Okay. So number four, employ a well-timed callback. Does your fight feel familiar? Most couples, you know, that aren't healthy endlessly repeat different versions of the same fight. In healthy relationships, there's nothing wrong with having an argument as long as it's resolved in one to two, you know, one to three conversations max. It happens to all of us, but if you notice you're going down the road that led you nowhere the last time and the point that out tactfully, you know, emphasize on it tactfully rather than here we go again, you know, don't be sarcastic about it. But you may be able to have a productive dialogue about how to communicate more effectively to avoid that pitfall. Good couples, successful couples, find ways around these kind of things. If both parties are curious about what's going on between them, what each person contributes to the interaction, then they can begin to work things out together. Okay. Number five, physical gestures go a long way. Even if things can't be resolved immediately, it's important for your partner to know you still care. Sometimes it's hard to say, I love you. When you feel hurt and angry, a physical gesture can be reassuring in a moment when your partner is feeling anxiously, you know, anxiously distant. However, it's also important to respect the other person's signals and not push too far with physical closeness when they not, I mean, they, you know, they're not feeling receptive towards that. You know, don't be that type of person when someone clearly does not want you around that you find some reason that you need to be close for them for five minutes. If someone, if you're in the middle of a fight, you'll say you're at dinner. And you're arguing like cats and dogs. It's escalating to the point to where it's just getting out of hand. You don't walk up to somebody and say, you know, I'm sorry we're fighting. Give me a hug. Obviously, if they're irritated, you say, I think at this time, like, we're not going to get anywhere with this. Let's cool down. I'm going to go, you know, if you live in the same home, I'm going to go upstairs and watch TV. If you live apart, I'm going to go ahead and go home. Let's take a couple of days and, you know, let's reach out after that and talk and see if we can resolve this. It's easier said than done to say things like that, but it's vitally important that you do. Good, successful couples who have healthy relationships can get heated, but then talk about it and let it go. If you don't have the ability to do that, you're in an, you're in an unhealthy relationship. People that hold grudges and walk around for days or repeat the same thing to you that they don't like about you for long periods of time, don't have, they don't have the right motives to be in the relationship with you. That means your relationship has likely gone toxic. Okay, so continually, you know, to openly give yourself to the relationship, even during rocky periods, allows both partners to re realize that conflict doesn't have to mean it's the end. This emphasizes the goal of strengthening the relationship rather than making the person bend to your will. Very, very important. But number one, patience. Okay, this, it's number six, but it's the number one most important one. Have patience. It takes time to work through core conflicts and relationships. You know, we all have baggage that stays with us in life. Um, but it's important that you talk to people about them. And that if someone really cares about you, they kind of want to know your baggage. I always say when you get in a relationship, let somebody go through your luggage at the door. You know, you don't want to overwhelm your partner with, hey, here's everything that, you know, that, you know, sucked in my previous relationships. But it's also important that they know what happened. Um, so that they can avoid it and they can also look for signs out of you that may be repeating what you already did that ended a prior relationship. And they need to know these things because the goal for them should be able to want to work these things out so that it's not happening to your relationship. Okay. Remember that conflict 
lessens in intensity over time, leading to greater mutual understanding. If you're in a healthy relationship, you're going to hear that a lot throughout my videos that it's important that you're in a healthy relationship when you take advice on things like this. Because if you're not, advice doesn't matter if your relationship's not healthy because nothing will help if you're incompatible and you're unhealthy with each other. And you're going to hear a lot of my segments end with that. So go back, watch a lot of my videos on things like this, repeat it to yourself, listen to it three to five times, really take, you know, take time to absorb the information. And I hope this information helped you. So if you'd like to book a personal session, contact me via the email below. And if you found this information helpful, show your appreciation by clicking the PayPal donation link below. And I will talk to you soon.